Hello and welcome. I'm Rainer and my presentation is New Online Measurement Procedures for Measurement of Heavy Metals in Water. I will focus on three points, discrete criteria, suitable technologies and new models and procedures. First about me, I'm an engineer and together with my team and some external partners we want to create the best online measurement instruments for heavy metals in water. I love my family, my three kids and three grandchildren and my hobby and I'm an enthusiastic uh, chess player and this is a picture of uh, my class. I train chess in the school of my wife so I'm very sure that everyone should learn playing chess in schools. How it began? It began that we looked for a focus. We looked for a niche where we can prosper. And we looked at competition industries, parameters. And very soon we found out that not that many in, uh, companies are in the heavy metals area. Online measurements for heavy metals are tricky and are more complicated because you're very often confronted with interferences with dirty or high loaded industrial waters. And so it's a very complex task, but this ensures you that if you have a position in this market and if you do research and development, that you're somehow protected against the competition if you do a better job and more focused job. Our company is based in Austria, uh, close to Vienna. It's a suburb from Vienna and Everything what you see in the analyzer is developed by or with us. Uh, main comp competences are the chemistry. This is the heart of the measurements. The measurement uh, technologies, procedures, optics and electronics. We do everything by ourselves. We do worldwide sales and maintenance. What are online measurements? Uh, online measurements are unattended, regular and continuously. And this is the main important, the main powerful picture. You see here real data from a client in North America. It's a mining company and they had a problem with nickel emissions. And the local government uh, wanted to close this uh, production down and you can uh, you can think about this is a major task uh, to, to shut down a, a mining operation. But at that point in time, they still not understood the problem. And so they, they asked us to help them to do online measurements. And we, we did online measurements for two months, every two hours. And when I showed this picture to the local engineer, he immediately understood the problem. And then they could... Uh, cover the problem, they could solve the problem and they have of course a very happy local government and in addition also uh, less consumables for the st more stable processes. We have to talk first about the, the main criteria for online measurements. This is measurement quality, cost per measurement and fail-safe operation. Measurement quality, everyone knows this is about the, the resolution. You can convert resolution to precision and you can convert precision to accuracy. It's about of selectivity, sensitivity and robustness of measurement. Uh, the cost per measurement, we, we, de we developed a new model. It's about the total cost per measurement. It means not only the, the, the operational cost or the investment in instruments, but also uh, people costs for maintenance, people costs for failures, uh, missing data, risks. If you have uh, toxic reagents, toxic material, this will also add up some costs. And of course, fail safe operation. At downtime, it's never, never an option. You must have always meaningful data delivered because in, uh, important uh, decisions are based on the data you deliver. So this is not an option. The measurement technologies. First, and this is what we have to talk most about it, it's about measurement technology in the first place. There are more suitable and less suitable technologies 
for online measurements of heavy metals in water. Uh, first, uh, there are always popping new uh, technologies into the market and say, yes, we can now measure heavy metals last, and, and then they fail. The last very good example was uh, X-ray fluorescence. X-ray fluorescence was heavily promoted, I think, three years ago by a big company, and then it, it came out. The, the infrastructure, the instrument you need is very heavy and, and bulky and, and uh, not easy to set up. And also the low limits of detection is in the range of 0 0.5 milligrams per liter. I think they started with arsenic and lead. And for many, many applications, 0 0.5 milligrams per liter is not good enough. You must be much lower, you must measure in the PPP range. So the resolution and the low limit is not suitable or popped out. Also a good example is voltammetry. Voltammetry uh, came also in the market and said, yeah, it, we can measure all of the heavy metals and so on. But it, they failed because they can't handle a more complex matrix in the sample or a changing matrix in the sample. Uh, and, and they also had a lot of problems with, with, with inter, uh, in, interferences. And the, the, the basic point is voltammetry is a qualitative measurement and not a quantitative. You can say maybe this and that is in the sample, but not for sure. So it popped out immediately and we could, could replace many instruments in Germany from volt voltammetry to calorimetric measurement. So uh, what, what this is about, it's about, uh, it's about complexity. It's about the online measurements need simple, simple instruments. And there is a good guideline from WHO. It's about the measurement complexity. And you see that the least com complex measurement method is calorimetric measured method. So everything at this point in time states that calorimetric measurement is the me method of choice. And calorimetric measures the following way. You have the sample, you add a buffer solution, and the buffer solution does mainly two things. It sets the, the, the sample to a specific pH and has also the option to cover interfering ions by masking, masking them. And then you have the dye, and the dye will create the color. And this color you measure, you measure absorbance at the specific wavelengths. And this absorbance at the specific wavelengths, it's direct proportional to concentration. And bringing together the concentration and, and the absorption is a six-point calibration. No, this technology is not very new. There is a nice Nature article from 1923. And here is state a Frenchman uh, from six, born 1698 that this, this person has done a lot of uh, uh, research on the calorimetric methods and technologies. So it's not very new, but it's stable. Uh, the six-point calibration will transfer or correlate the absorbance value, the color intensity to the concentration. We have chosen six points because the calibration is very important for good accurate data <clears throat> and it means you must know if your calibration performs well or not you must know the quality of calibration the products we have we have the whole range of heavy metals and of course some rare heavy metals cadmium mercury boron tin and others so we are very much focused on this of course we do have some onions too but our focus is the heavy metals and we have the full range of heavy metals. In most cases, starting with one PPP and going up to hundreds of PPM for specific applications. If you talk, oh, what are the most important or the most interesting analyzers? I have to name it first, it's the arsenic analyzer. The arsenic analyzer, we do direct arsenic measurements starting by once one PPP, mostly in the range from 1 to 20 to 50 PPP. And we do this without converting to a zine. This is, we do not want to have toxic gases or toxic material in our operation or created by our analyzer. 
as well as double parameters. We measure iron, manganese, we measure nickel, copper, we, we measure uh, copper and zinc together in one analyzer. The next important point is how compares the, our analyzer design to the design from our competitors. Of course, ours is new and high quality. Most important is the flow-through design. Flow-through design means that every liquid is pumped by a dedicated high-precision, high-quality peristaltic stepper motor pump. Therefore, you do not need any other appliances or parts to get the mixed solution in the concentrations you like into the photometer. While our competitors have different pumps, a different setup, a different bucket system. It's that you have a flask and then you drop in solution one, two, three, four, whatever, and then you mix and then you look through. This needs a lot more complicated setup. It's also you have a syringe pumps and not a stepper motor pump. Syringe pumps, there's one good reason. They're very cheap, but a nightmare even in maintenance. And more, even more funny are duckbill pumps. But to come back to the flow-through system, it's not only that it reduces the complexity uh, of, of the instrument and therefore will increase the operational stability, but also you get some additional functions by design bubble detection. If a bubble passes by, means missing solution. If a bubble passing by the photometer, you see immediately like a black shadow. You can count this. You can measure this. So you can detect missing solutions by design. You do not need anything else. Others can't. You, the mixing of solutions, it's done automatically. You do not need extra mixing uh, devices like our competitors are using. We have automated dilution. It means if a value exceeds the measurement limits, you can measure in dilution automatically again without disruption. Our competitors need spe specific uh, different additional devices. With our system, flow-through system, it comes by design. The standard edition. Standard addition means you add a standard with a known concentration to the sample, and because of the outcome, you can say, A, is there interference, yes or not? And if there's interference, you can then recalculate the real concentrations. Our competitors can't do this because they, have, they do not have this kind of setup they can do. We can also do a multiple standard addition, by the way. Get kinetic information. We talked about the absorbance and, and not only absorbance is indication to concentration, also the speed of color creation, the so-called kinetic information. We measure kinetic information in our photometer because it, we measure while color develops. Our competitors can't do this. But this information is very important because we know how the color should create. Uh, should, 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 should create. And so we can say, if it's different, then we might have a problem with interference. Or we can use this also as an indication for concentration. So we say, we do not have to wait until everything is complex. For example, nickel is a very uh, slow uh, uh, color creation. And we can say, okay, after some seconds, I know enough to, to know the concentration. You can then take the curve below the line. Uh, the functions, six, yeah, the measurement models. We have direct measurement. We have kinetic measurement in the I point standard edition, where I point stands for integral. We can measure the uh, area below the curve. We have a six point calibration. Six points, as I mentioned before, it's, you, you must have more information to say, to tell if the quality of the, the calibration is good or not. And of course, very important, the, the reagents. Our reagents are built by ourselves. Non-toxic, non-dangerous, designed for online measurements, high resolution and long shelf life. Other vendors do not care about their reagents. 
Next slide is about connecting the dots. We have discussed about the three main criteria, zero unplanned downtime, measurement quality and total cost per measurement. And now we have colorimetric uh, measurement, we have the function, the flow through this uh, the technology and the simple and robust design. And now we can pinpoint if these uh, functions and these features support the analyzer. The analyzer consists of three parts, failsafe electronics, six dedicated peristaltic pumps for all liquids, no need for gravity, and a, a small spectra photometer. It means this, it's a simple setup. Also to check the failure, if there is power, if the pumps are turning, and if the mode photometer gives the light, you can measure. It's so simple. If you have a failure on site, something goes wrong inside, everyone can easily check if the analyzer measures correctly or not. The uh, examples from real installation, I want to start with Frankenbrunnen. Frankenbrunnen is a mineral water uh, uh, company in, in Bavaria and we have their um, installation where we measure 13 different sample streams from raw water to quality, uh, to, to quality insurance for, for end product. And we, we measure this in different time sequences. And you can imagine the background or the matrix of the water is very different from, 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 from sample to sample. And also the measurement range we have to cover is from zero to 10 ppm. So it's a, a huge uh, uh, measurement range we have to cover. And we cover this with two analyzer. On the left side, you see Nitrate analyzer, no, it's iron manganese, sorry, it's iron manganese analyzer. On the right side is nitrate analyzer and iron ma manganese, it's a, a double measurement, two measurements in one analyzer. Here on the right side, you see the installation. It's not ready, it's not finished there. It was while installation. Uh, also, here's automated dilution. In case, sometimes it might be that uh, a value exceeds the, the concentration limit of 10 ppm, then we can do things. We can extrapolate and say, okay, it might be this or dilute. Another nice example is uh, the Notre Dame Cathedral. You remember 2018, 400 tons of, of lead roof were burned and fall down into uh, the cathedral. And we measured the, the lead contamination. Lead contamination is there everywhere. It, 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 it's, in the, it's on the ground and everything you touch may be contaminated. And we have the, the two stations because on, on two outlets where, where we look for the contamination. We also measure the turbidity to correlate somehow turbidity and lead concentration. And uh, the, the basic idea here is to uh, to, to measure if there is a contamination and if there is, how, how big it is. And uh, this, this measurement is after, after, the, after the, the lead treatment. Uh, also automatic dilution and also uh, test measurements every day. So the measurements every, every day uh, concentration. The, the third example is uh, in, in Peru, in the Andes, it, it's a mining project where we measure arsenic, two sample streams in and outlet before and after treatment range is 2 ppm to about 0 0.1 or 0 0.05 pp, uh, pp, yeah, ppm as a, in the range. Uh, the, the, the low range, uh, the low measurement point is about 100 ppp. Uh, they hope, they hope that to, 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 to get lower this. While, why I brought this, the main reason is that we want to, be, we want to show uh, it's not easy to get there. You have to fly from Lima in the north, then you have to go by a train, and then you have to go by a small plane, and then you have to go by a truck. So it needs several days to get there. It's, a, it's on a, a 3,000 meter elevation, and it, it, there is no winter or summer. They have different climate uh, situations. So it, sometimes it's very cold and very hot. So it's, 
it 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 it's in in a bigger shelf mounted in a bigger shelf to be somehow protected against this um, one very important point is the maintenance maintenance has the big advantage that you you see the 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 easy uh, the the easy operation best example is i was now in some weeks before in new zealand and i gave a host to, to a person say, can you change this without any introduction, any training and the person could change the hose and this is the only thing you want you have to change every 6 to every 12 months depending on measurement frequency nothing else everyone can do this without any introduction without any training this is only thing what you have to do and you have to do this twice twice a year and the total time is about 10 to 6 uh, 10 to 15 hours per year so please come to us on our site i welcome you uh, it's, it's whole c the booth 104 or on the internet i'm happy to talk to you thank you very much and hopefully see you soon thank you